Hey, Remote Pilot 101, Jason here with another SUAS update. As we know, most American drone innovation spawns from military necessity and funding. That said, anytime the Army is in the market for a new system, well, we're interested to see where they're heading. Today, we get a glimpse as the Army tiptoes into the future of unmanned flight. Looking to upgrade from their RQ-7 Shadow on April 7th, the 1st Armor Brigade Combat out of Fort Riley, Kansas performed a capabilities assessment of the Archuis UAV Jump 20, it's called. So in 2019, the Army selected four unmanned aircraft systems as candidates to replace the Shadow, but due to precautions set out by the spread of the coronavirus, they thought testing would be totally postponed. That is until Major General John Kolosheski uh, determined five units could proceed with proper mitigations while following CDC and DOD guidelines. In addition to identifying new primary system candidates, the assessments are set to inform requirements for future tactical unmanned aircraft systems, or FTUAS, that would fit into the future vertical lift ecosystem, including new helicopters and air-launched effects as well. So what does all this mean? Well, one such effect may include the GLUAS, or Grenade Launched Unmanned Aerial System. That sounds pretty cool. According to a patent filed last month, scientists at the Army Research Lab have designed a camera drone capable of being fired from a 40 millimeter grenade launcher with two apparent variants. Uh, one involves a small, uh, kind of like a paragliding system with four propeller blades and mylar paragliding wings to help it stay in the air. The other involves a more like a helicopter style system that hovers on a gimbling set of coaxial rotors. According to insiders, the breakthrough in weapon system integration revolves around how miniaturized autonomous flight hardware has become in recent years. So when it came to replacing the Shadow, the Army pitted teams against one another, which is fun, in an effort to create a competitive soldier-led evaluation, which took place in March of 2019. Initially, the matchup was two-on-two -two between Martin UAV and Textron's AAI Corporation. Martin teamed up with Northrop Grumman to provide its VBAT UAS. Textron offered its Aerosan HQ, but shortly thereafter, the service added two more aircraft to the mix. The four teams then competed in a rigorous fly-off from December 2018 till uh, the end of January at Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah. We assume dodging all the UFOs the Pentagon recently confirmed that were flying around in that area. The matchups helped the service select the systems that would proceed uh, to this month's soldier assessment phase. So, aside from always needing a new plaything, what was wrong with the Shadow? The Army was primarily looking for systems that improved upon the previous UAS acoustic performance, with the word being their old toy performed like a flying lawnmower. Their words, right? Additionally, concerns uh, surrounded independence as the shadow relies on a runway to take off and land. So that is a difficulty as well as we move towards VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. Moving forward, five units will assess the systems uh, between the drones, beginning with the largest participant weighing 210 pounds and having an 18-foot wingspan. According to an Army statement, despite the size, its reduced acoustic signature compared to the shadow is appreciated by the entire crew who is used to screaming and utilizing comms exclusively to pass the word over the screaming motors. Whereas you can stand right next to the aircraft and not even have to raise your voice. By its own right, the Jump 20 can launch and return from a confined area with minimal ground support equipment, which does give it a leg up when it comes to recovery. Soldiers of the first will test the systems over the next five months, utilizing a crawl, walk, run mentality, wherein they'll progress through uh, operator and collective training cumulatively in the brigade uh, type level field exercises and a combat training center rotation. Units at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, Fort Lewis, Washington, Fort Bliss, Texas, and others will evaluate other system offerings uh, through May uh, and even into September. But according to the Army's statement, uh, the assessment schedules are under regular reevaluation because of the coronavirus is always changing conditions. That, of course, again, crawl, walk, run could easily shift into hurry up and wait, as we know. 
That said, ideally, assessments for the four systems over the course of fiscal 2020 will help the Army decide how it would like to proceed, not only replacing the shadow, but requiring this FTUAS system that will play the integral role in the fleet alongside manned and optionally manned and unmanned aircraft moving into 2021. So what are your thoughts? Have you seen any of these four potential candidates? What stood out to you as super cool stuff? Let us know in the comments down below. I check all the comments on Facebook, on YouTube, on remotepot101.com. You may get a response from myself and the team there as well. So have a wonderful week and we'll see you all next week. Remote Pilot 101 is the most successful Part 107 test prep course on the market with over 18,000 tests passed. It's one price and you get our updated initial and brand new recurrent course for life. It's two courses for the price of one and it's for life. See the actual test questions, learn the material, take the practice quizzes all at your own pace through our easy videos you've already grown to love. Visit remotepilot101.com to become a member for life and learn more.